The FAA is making it clear that intentional violation of the ADSB regulations will be costly. AOPA has learned that FAA has just revised its inspector's handbook and under the new rules there won't be any tolerance for intentionally flying without ADSB operating in airspace where the regs require it. They're going to use the same approach that they do for other intentional falsification issues, which is revocation of your pilot certificates. But that's for intentionally turning off ADSB. Equipment failure, unintentional entry into so-called rural airspace. Our FAA contacts say they still want to work toward voluntary compliance and education. Well, what I recommend to pilots is, first of all, be sure that your ADSB system is working the way it should. Understand the airspace where you need to be using ADSB and understand how you need to be operating your ADSB. Uh, there is a lot of guidance on the FAA website to be able to help you, and you can also call our PIC Center, and they'll be able to answer questions there. Beyond that, uh, make sure that your ADSB system is in good operating condition, just like the rest of your aircraft. And if there is a problem, be sure to call our legal services plan, and we can help walk through any circumstance uh, that may arise that involves your ADSB system not working, uh, or perhaps entering airspace where you needed to have ADSB but didn't realize it. And we can work with you through those circumstances and help you deal with the FAA. While pilots can turn off ADSB in formation flights, we're currently advocating for a change in the FARs allowing a pilot to turn off ADSB out in areas where it's not required by regulation. You can do that now with your transponder. But the current FAR 91215 requires ADSB to be turned on all the time if the aircraft is equipped with it. Well, Tom, I talked to uh, Rune Duke, our ADSB advocacy right. expert, and, and he stressed that the good news is the FAA is taking an educational approach. Right, it's great to hear. Yeah, if, if there is an aircraft that's non-compliant, though, they're going to reach out to the pilot so that you could get it fixed and provide some education. And we know that there are about 10,000 non-compliant systems right. flying out there, and uh, AOPA and the FAA are working closely and also with manufacturers to uh, really make sure that this works. We know there are going to be some hiccups and it's, it's a big educational push. It is, and, uh, but as, as Justine points out, very little tolerance for those who are yes. doing it on purpose or trying to uh, escape uh, from a situation, something like that. Don't do that because that can really lead to a revocation which is very serious business. Yes. Okay.